We have Vice Mayor James Clendenin again with us today and some other guests that we will introduce here in a minute. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. There's really three topics we want to talk about today. And we're going to talk about the Wichita Police Department adding Spanish language public safety briefings that I, I think are going to be a nice addition to our briefings here. Uh, and then we have transit free fair weeks and some other clean air efforts. And we have May is bike month. I, uh, I received some great advice from the vice mayor. I was thinking about doing this press conference in my bike shorts, and he recommended that I didn't do that. So, vice mayor, thank you. That's pretty exciting. I would encourage Lieutenant Espinoza and Officer Paul Cruz to join me up here, if you wouldn't mind. And uh, Chief Mosley, would you like to join us too? Appreciate you being here, Chief. Thank you, sir. I don't get to see you often enough. Here, sir. <laughs> I like that. I just want you to know I feel safer when you're in the room with me. Well, thank you. Wait. I appreciate yeah. that. Let, let me share a little bit about what we're doing with this Spanish briefing because I think it really will add some value to our community. I want to talk about that and then these folks certainly can answer some questions and I believe Officer, Officer Paul Cruz is going to share a few comments. Uh, the Wichita Police Department Department is launching this week a Spanish language public safety briefing. This week's news conferences are scheduled to start Tuesday, May the 19th. The first Spanish language public safety briefing will include information on crime prevention, current police incidences, and community safety. This addition directly supports many of the city of Wichita's goals, including public safety, transparency, and community engagement. It also serves a growing Hispanic minority group in the Wichita area. I want to talk about that briefly. Hispanics now make up at least 15% of Wichita's population, and that's according to the latest census that's about five years old in, in its data. So we think that that might have even shifted some more. The reason we're doing this is pretty simple, folks. We want everyone to be informed, to feel safe, and to know that they can call the police or fire for help. The weekly Spanish language briefing will be conducted by Wichita Police Department Officer Paul Cruz. I'll share a little bit of background on Mr. Cruz. He's a three-year law enforcement veteran. He is also a professional experience, he has a professional experience as a radio, newspaper, and television journalist. So I'm sure some of you will be nicer to him than you are to me and producer. And Officer Cruz has also served on the Kansas Hispanic Latino Affairs Commission. Officer Cruz, would you like to share a few remarks? Um, I think this is a great opportunity. First of all, I want to thank our mayor, uh, Chief of Police, and Lieutenant Espinoza for this opportunity. I think this is something that uh, it's going to be uh, a project that I think embraces diversity. It, uh, it's, it's something that this community needs. And I'm just happy to be part of that. And I'm looking forward to what this could become. You know, it's always an outstanding opportunity to uh, add another piece of uh, resource or a resource for the department uh, to communicate. Our object is to obviously always uh, engage our citizens. And this gives us another uh, means to do that. You know, Officer Paul Cruz is going to do a good job in that. As far as this and getting uh, our word out, it's also, like the mayor said, opportunity to have a two-way conversation. We look for any opportunity to get, engage our citizens. And in doing so, um, I've been to several meetings where even members of our Hispanic community have said we haven't wanted to report crime. And this is another opportunity for us to build that relationship with our community and continue that engagement. So thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity. And I know Officer Cruz will do an outstanding job with Lieutenant Espinoza involved as well. So thank you. And thank you all for being here. Appreciate that. When we talk about how we're going to make a difference in this community and be more proactive on a different variety of fronts, including reaching out to the community, this is a prime example of how we can be more proactive to help the community become safer. So we thank you and we appreciate your mission. So thank you very much. If we could have... Uh, Mr. Spade and uh, Steve Spade, our Director of Transit, Mary Kay Vaughn, join me up here. 
I want to talk about the free fares week that we're going to have for our transit department and some other efforts. This year marks the second annual free fares week, June 15th through the 20th, to bring awareness to using transit in order to improve our air quality in Wichita. This is an annual campaign to support the city's clean air efforts. The highlight is a week when residents can ride transit buses for free. It also helps support ozone alert days, which help raise awareness for the city exceeding the federal clean air measures, which is referred to as going out of attainment. We encourage residents to use the week of June 15th through the 20th to try Wichita Transit for free and see how they can incorporate a public transit into their lifestyle. This, the, the week of free fares will include a selfie contest. Riders can take a selfie while riding the bus during free fares week with the hashtag catch a ride Wichita. Post it to Wichita Transit's Facebook or Twitter pages and be entered to win one of ten prizes that include free bus passes. I don't believe those are for life, just free bus passes. All right. Still a good prize. Enter by posting to Facebook.com slash Wichita Transit or at Wichita Transit via Twitter. This is a partnership between Wichita Transit and the Department of Environmental Health with funding from the Federal Highway Administration. I want to share just a few results from last year. In 2014, Wichita Transit provided more than 58,000 rides during Free Fares Week, an increase of 15,000 rides. Reduction of more than 400 pounds of nitrogen oxides, a key ingredient in this ozone mixture. And the success of Free Fares Week contributed to Wichita Transit ridership increasing an average of 4% every month after that. Ozone, which is a byproduct of air pollutants mixing with heat and sunlight, is harmful to everyone's health, and ozone season is normally April through October. So in addition to this special week, we also have free fares on all ozone alert days. And is that new this year? No, we did the same thing last year. Okay, excellent. We just need to share that more often. The public can sign up at wichita.gov backslash ozone for ozone alert emails. Pay attention to city and transit social media outlets as well as the, the black ITS signs on the highways for notification that you have seen put up over the last couple of years. Ozone alert days will go out the day before all high ozone days. Some things that we can do to minimize ozone, ride transit. Stop at the click when fueling your vehicle so that you don't overspill and that causes emissions into the air. Fuel vehicles and mow yards when it's cool. Manager, when you're mowing my yard, could you do it when it's cool? Drive less, postpone errands to other days, turn your key, be idle free, turn your car off if you will be idling for more than 30 seconds. The city is also adding a new twist this year. Wichita Transit will provide deeply discounted bus passes for youth, and I, maybe Steve Spade can share that with us, on the Way to Work Summer Jobs Program. These youth will receive instruction on how to use public transit as, as its advantages. Bus passes are part of the support services including, included in the program, which is paid for with federal funds. Steve, would you like to share a few remarks? Because I think that was your idea in terms of the bus passes for youth. So why don't you <clears throat> tell us what you're trying to achieve there? Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, and if I remember correctly, it was uh, conversation we were having on the bus uh, that, that led to this, so appreciate it. Uh, actually, both of these programs are great opportunities to introduce the public to transit. Um, the uh, Ozone Day, uh, you know, we're trying to encourage people uh, during Ozone Days to do something to uh, reduce pollution and uh, offering free rides when there is an Ozone Day. One of the things we uh, are taking advantage of with this grant is the ability to operate or to offer uh, a free fare week that will allow people to get familiar with the system 
And then if we do have a zone zone day, it's much easier to make that decision to use the bus. And it really did, uh, I, what we found last year is by introducing people to the service and how good it really is, uh, we have attracted new riders. So we're looking forward to that this year. Uh, the, the mayor mentioned our uh, Way to Youth uh, work program. Actually, uh, the housing department has offered this summer youth employment program for a number of years. And uh, the, what we have this year is uh, uh, we've come up with a way that transit can participate in that and uh, begin to introduce transit service to the youth that are participating in that program. The uh, Way to Youth is going to uh, uh, provide part-time jobs for about 150 youth uh, for what, nine, nine, nine week period? Uh, uh, during that time, the kids are uh, working like four hours a day. Uh, what the, the program that we've developed is that we'll provide uh, passes to the students that are part of the uh, youth employment program that they can use not only to get to and from work that day, but then the rest of the day and on Saturdays, we encourage them to use those passes to explore the city, learn the system, get familiar with what we're doing, uh, in hopes that they'll become uh, users of the service, they'll understand how it works, but also uh, they're going to be learning a life skill, uh, learning how to understand and operate, uh, use a transit system as a skill that kids can use uh, wherever they are. So we're hoping it's a good summer activity for them at the same time uh, is uh, developing a great life skill. So we're looking at, we appreciate being able to partner with the housing department on that. That's awesome. Was there a question for Mr. Spade? Will this be expanded to other youth in the community besides the 150 that are part of Way to Work? Uh, at this point, I, uh, this program is isolated to these 150, although, again, if it's successful, we'd love to be able to look at ways to partner. I, I think um, uh, partnering with the school districts to find ways to provide our services uh, in, a, in a more coordinated fashion uh, to help figure out ways to introduce youth to the, to the US uh, and to the service it will benefit not only us in the community, but also these kids. So we hope this is a, a step in the direction of doing more things for kids. Sorry, one more question. Wanted to know how successful was Ozone Alert Days last year, uh, ridership and as well as? Well, uh, the, the Ozone Alert Week, uh, we, we uh, had about a I think it's about a 40% increase in ridership, so it was pretty substantial. Uh, and it, interesting uh, to note that we had a number of people would call and say, okay, I'm going to try this for the first time, how do I do it, which is what we wanted, wanted to accomplish. The other thing that's interesting uh, is that we think that free week contributed to the ridership growth that we've seen. We've actually had 10 consecutive months of ridership growth. Uh, after a multi-year trend of, of seeing ridership decline. And we think part of the reason for that uh, is the fact that we stimulated so much interest uh, during that week. I, I don't think you missed anything, but I would like to say that one of the uh, objectives of the Summer Youth Employment Program is not only to introduce young people to the world of work, but also to the world of responsibility. And having the bus pass uh, is going to help us in that regard as well, so that the young person will be responsible for getting themselves to and from work and just uh, part, of, part of, of growing up and uh, becoming independent. So we appreciate the opportunity to uh, partner with Transit and uh, really think it's going to make a big difference in our young people's lives. Great program. Thanks to both Mary Kay and Steve. I think that is a terrific idea and I think again it's an opportunity to make a difference in our community starting with our young people. If Scott Wadle wouldn't mind joining me up here, I want to talk about Bike Month, even though I didn't wear my bike shorts. May is Bike Month, and tomorrow, Friday, is Bike to Work Day. There will be free breakfast stations from 6.30 to 9 at six different locations. Locations of breakfast stations are available at bikemonthwichita.org. They are, and I will share them with you, 2nd and Fountain Street, Johnson's Garden Center on West 13th. Hydraulic and Douglas area, the Ark River Path near the Keeper of the Plains, Ark River Path near 25th Street, and Bicycle Exchange on Douglas in Delano. These events are organized by Community Committee, and we want to thank the volunteers for all of their efforts. 
There is also a free lunch in Old Town Square by the movie theater from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. You can learn more about Bike Month and National Bike Challenge. Visit bikemonth.org for an update regarding the city's enhanced and expanding bike trail system. Contact City Planner Scott Wadle and uh, he would be happy to visit with you. Scott, is there something I missed or you'd like to add to that? We just encourage people to have fun. Thank you. Well, I, again, these are initiatives that we think are important to the city and hope that people take us up on these opportunities. We appreciate all of you being here. I was neglecting one duty, and I, I see that he had to leave the room. Council Member Brian Fry joined us briefly again this week, and we appreciate that. There will be opportunities in the future when we're talking about some very council-specific opportunities <laughs> to share in these weekly briefings. So more to follow. Thanks for coming. Nice to have you. Enjoy the rest of your day.